I am here to speak on a little bit on the uh, work of my organization, the International Multilateral Partnership Against Cyber Threats, or IMPACT, uh, in short. Uh, IMPACT is perhaps the uh, newest addition to the United Nations family. Uh, we have become the cybersecurity executive arm of the United Nations under the purview of a specialized agency, the International Telecommunications Union, the ITU. Uh, IMPACT serves to provide cybersecurity support uh, to all the 192 member, UN member countries and um, serves to be a platform that garners together the resources of the governments, the private sector, the academia and civil society. First, a little bit about cybersecurity and why it is so important to have an organization dedicated in the fight against cybersecurity. Uh, as we all know, uh, cyber threats is not a threat that can be contained within physical borders. It does not, it does not matter what the domestic policies or the laws of a particular country is or can be. Uh, you cannot track cyber, cyber threats from your borders merely by the enacting of your domestic laws. Um, cyber, security, cyber threats recognizes no borders and hence it has become a very elusive threat for governments to manage as a domestic issue. Because of that, there is a need for a global platform uh, to address cyber threats collectively, uh, getting together governments of the world, together with the resources of other important stakeholders. Uh, cyber threats have become a key issue that is pertinent in this forum because as I have mentioned earlier, as we all know, uh, cyber security is an essential enabler or a given that needs to be in place for any e-government initiatives to take place. It is the basis of trust for many of the e-government initiatives and it is um, a condition that's necessary to, uh, to, to, uh, to make the uh, potential of e-government to be realized. Some of the key challenges that is faced by governments and also the world today. Uh, first, uh, as perhaps uh, alluded by my colleague, uh, uh, Mr. Drone, uh, with great experience, uh, there is a uh, lack of interoperable national or regional uh, legal framework. Why this is so important is because, as I mentioned earlier also, uh, cyber threats recognizes no borders. The, the the very people that may be harming or, or may be bad to cause harm to cyber initiatives or e-government initiatives may not necessarily be residing in your country. Uh, a typical chain of cyber crime involves a situation where the victim is in one country, the payment server is in another, the uh, website may be hosted in a third country, uh, and it further adds to the conclusion is the uh, spread of cloud computing now, and the five family, the criminal may be acting, uh, may be uh, uh, present in another country. So, there, so having three or four countries in a chain of a single cyber crime is not uncommon. In fact, this is perhaps the most frustrating aspect of cyber crime as far as law enforcement officials are concerned. And that is why today, uh, even though the incidence of cyber crime is on the rise, the successful rate of prosecution is very, very low and certainly not keeping up with the rise in cyber crime. The reason for this is uh, can be attributed to the lack of uh, harmonized legal frameworks among countries. Uh, it is one thing to have laws in one particular country, but in order to bring to justice or to bring to book the people responsible for the cyber crime, you need to have the entire chain of, uh, uh, of incident be able to have a single harmonized law that deals in things like preservation of evidence, um, uh, modalities of dealing with uh, proceedings and other, other pertinent legal issues. And that is why it's become a key challenge for us all. Um, now back to ITU and IMPACT. Uh, the, uh, the IMPACT uh, coalition, as we call it, uh, is the is the platform 
to bring governments of the world together in addressing this issue. They are complex legal issues, they are complex technical issues, and also capacity building issues that needs to be tackled on a global front. Uh, two years ago, uh, IMPACT was born with a membership of just 27 countries, 27 of the United Nations member states. Today, we have 126 countries uh, in the IMPACT coalition. Uh, the IMPACT coalition brings together not just governments, but also the private sector, some of the key, uh, some of the biggest key players, uh, uh, people like Microsoft, uh, security niche players like Symantec Corporation, Kaspersky Labs, actually actively uh, provide uh, assistance to IMPACT on an hourly uh, basis almost, uh, to provide cyber threat information to the global community. Uh, IMPACT is maybe two years old, it's just a work in progress. However, I think in the last two years, we have significantly been able to deliver a great number of services to our constituents. Uh, IMPACT's aim is to act as a platform to bring together not just governments, but also industry experts, academia, other international organizations uh, within and, within and outside the UN system, organizations like Interpol, for instance, into this equation. Uh, IMPACT, in turn, um, uh, garners all these um, available uh, resources and skills and, and um, uh, technology and, and the, the, the key, key resources to service the 192 partner countries of the United Nations and also the individual United Nations uh, organizations like the FAO, WHO and others. Uh, these are some samples of some of the countries that have joined the UN coalition. Uh, we have in, on the board 116 countries, that was two of last week. I just uh, received a call from my office today to say that 10 more countries have joined in the last three days. So it is a rapidly uh, increasing uh, number of countries that we have uh, under the uh, impact collision. Uh, these are some of the industry partners as well as international organizations and uh, the academia, uh, as well as uh, some of the partners under our child online protection program. Uh, I would like to return back to the question of legal framework, which is what um, this uh, session is focused on. Uh, what does impact offer to uh, participating countries? Well, first of all, um, impact allows its membership uh, to have access to its resources. Uh, one of the uh, resources that we have for regulators as well as officials uh, policy making officials is, um, if you like, a very a very basic roadmap uh, to first of all understanding cyber crime, and second of all, understanding the options available for individual governments to enact um, a, a effective legislative uh, provision that is not only um, uh, harmonised for international use, but also enables governments to. Uh, pro provide necessary conducive environment for e-government initiatives. The, um, uh, the, the toolkit, uh, which was developed together with experts from the ITU, the International Telecommunication Union, uh, members of Foreign Bar Association, uh, enables governments to, uh, to understand options that are open to them and enact laws which are not only in their interest, but also ultimately enables effective cross-border prosecution in cases of cyber crime. So this is some of the, um, uh, uh, if you like, uh, benefits or, or tools that are available to uh, member states under the impact ITU uh, coalition. Uh, I would also like to share with you uh, some of the pertinent, uh, some of the pertinent, uh, if you like, milestones and also benefits that are provided to our member states. Uh, the Global Response Center of Impact uh, partners with some of the leading names uh, in the industry, some of those that I mentioned earlier, to provide hour-to-hour -hour, uh, landscape information, cyber threat landscape information. This will be very pertinent to operators or custodians of e-government initiatives because, uh, just to give you an example, if a particular uh, e-government infrastructure that compromised in one country, 
because of, of a vulnerability arising from the use of a certain platform, for instance. Um, what we seek to do is to alert countries and governments running those same platforms of the available or of, of the vulnerabilities as well as uh, potential case studies. Now, information like this, um, you, you may question why it's not being shared earlier, but the reality is that a lot of threat information actually ends up within the borders of a particular state. There is no incentive or mechanisms earlier to provide uh, a, a forum or platform for governments to share information. Working with the UN, working with key industry players, impact is, has been, in the last uh, six months, have been trying to, uh, to establish a mechanism where such information can be safely and effectively shared under the Global Response Center. Um, some of the other uh, provisions or, or, or facilities that is provided is also a capacity building uh, function with an impact. Um, in the last six months, uh, we have trained over 200 cybersecurity professionals and practitioners in, in developing countries. Uh, we've also deployed 151 scholarships to over 27 countries globally. Uh, we've also trained law enforcement uh, officials from various countries working in consultation with uh, technology companies on, uh, on cyber forensics. Uh, uh, in addition, we also have ongoing, uh, ongoing programs to ensure that governments keep up to date with uh, knowledge on cyber threats so that they are able to translate that knowledge into action in their respective forums. And uh, with that, I thank you all for your attention and I have the privilege of now inviting our next uh, panelist, um, Professor Khan, Kali Khan, who is a professor of the School of Economics and Management of the Beijing University of Post and Telecommunications of China. Uh, professor Khan's, um, uh, over lunch, I had to know a little bit of a conversation with Professor Khan, and uh, I have the privilege of uh, sharing with you that he's a very eminent um, academician. Uh, he's uh, an alumni of Stanford University in, in the US, and in fact, he's one of the uh, first uh, uh, alumni from mainland China, I believe, who uh, just studied in Stanford at that time. And uh, he's, uh, he's had a very varied career, both in government and in academia. And I'm sure he will be able to share with us uh, some very interesting and pertinent aspects of the security of, uh, in terms of e-government. Uh, so, kind of over to you. <laughs>